Let's do some practice and review applying the accounting equation. In the last few days, we've talked about assets, liabilities, and owner's equity and the relationship between those two uh, sides of the equal sign. And so, once again, so on the left side, you have your assets. Zoom that in a little for you. Which is property that is either owned or controlled by a business. And then on the other side of the equal sign, uh, we have liabilities and owner's equity. Now, both of these uh, fall into the category of, equi category of equities, but of different types. So liabilities is a type of equity where somebody outside of the business has provided the financial uh, capital or money to purchase or acquire the assets. So somebody outside of the business then has a claim to these assets. And the owner's equity is the owner's equity in the business, and that means the owner's claim of the assets, thus meaning that the owner has in some way provided the financial capital to acquire the assets or to control the assets. So what we want to do here is just take a look at the equation and find the missing quantities just to gain a better understanding of how the accounting equation must remain in balance at all times. So in this first situation, we have 17,000 equals, we have 7,000 in liabilities, and we don't know what the owner's equity is, but we do know that the total of this plus this must equal this. So that being the case, if this equals this plus this, then we've learned, we've learned in, uh, in our arithmetic classes back in elementary school that the opposite of addition is subtraction. So it would follow then that this minus this would equal that. And indeed that is the case. So, and just looking at it without even doing a calculation, you can see that we need to get to 17,000. So what number do we need this to be in order to get to 17,000? We have 7,000 here. How much more do we need to get to 17,000? And the answer is simply 10,000. But let's go ahead and do the calculation. So, equal sign. There's our total assets minus our liabilities. And so there's our 10,000. And then we can go ahead and format these as dollars. We don't need any decimal places. And we could make it bold if you want. So assets. We don't know the assets, but we do know that Liabilities are 6,000, owner's equity is 20,000, and so we're just going to simply add those two together to find this missing amount. So once again, equal sign, 6,000, plus the 20,000. Go ahead and format those. We'll learn Excel at the same time we're learning some accounting. And let's do one more, and then you can go ahead and finish these on your own. So we had owner's equity missing, assets missing. Let's find the next one where we don't know what the liabilities are. So once again, the total amount is 10000 Owner's equity is 7000 So it looks like we need 3000 in order for this to equal this. And so the formula for that would be our equal sign. Click on the 10000 total assets minus the owner's equity, and there is our 3,000. So do the rest of these in a similar fashion to get the practice, and then we will move on to the next section of this worksheet. All right, so the second part of the worksheet is located down here at the bottom. We want to click on sheet 3-2. And this is going to give us an opportunity to practice some accounting transactions. Economic events occur within a business, meaning that some type of a financial obligation is made or there's a transfer of money. And so that needs to be recorded. And once again, you will see that we have our classifications here, assets, liabilities, and owner's equity. And then within these classifications, we keep track of economic activity through accounts. And so in this example here, we have just, it looks like six accounts here. So we have cash, accounts receivable, office furniture, a bicycle, 
uh, some security patrol animals, and a computer. And so these are all assets. And then we just have one liabilities account, accounts payable. And this is where you, you record a transaction where you owe money to somebody. And then under owner's equity, we have a capital account where we keep track of the owner's claim to the assets of the business. And then we have an expense category and a revenue category that we'll talk about a little bit later on as we get through this. So I'm going to go ahead and delete some of these and then rebuild them. So our first transaction is Jacob deposited $30,000 in his business checking account. So anytime you see something like this, $30,000, you have to ask yourself, what is that $30,000? And that $30,000 is cash. So we are going to make an entry here, $30,000. And you might want to go ahead and format that. Like I said, we like to learn Excel while we're doing this. And so let's do this. Let's... Uh, Let's make that bold and uh, make it currency. Decrease the decimals and place it right in the center. Now we have to make another entry in another account because remember we have an equal sign right there. And so this must remain in balance. Liabilities plus owner's equity. That must occur. Make that plus sign bold. There we go. And so we're going to put that in the capital account because the owner invested it. The owner has the claim to that money. So once again, 30000 And we can format that with the dollar sign. Decrease the decimals. Bold and center. And so there's our first transaction. And we take a look at it and we see that the trend that the equation is still in balance. Assets increased by 30,000. Owner's equity increased by 30,000. So we're on the right side of the equal sign is equal to the left side of the equal sign. Let's take a look at the next one. Shelby invested her personal office furniture into her business. The furniture is valued at $700. So you can invest something other than cash in a business. You can take furniture uh, out of your personal use and invest it or make it part of the business, and so you can record that transaction. So we have an account here called Office Furniture. It's valued at 700 And dollar sign again. Bold. Center. And now we can speed things up a little bit. Now that we have this formatting done and we know we're going to have to put a 700 somewhere else, we can just simply copy that with a right click and then a right click over here because this is going to come under capital and paste it here right there so we don't have to do all that clicking up above on the toolbar anymore Samantha wrote a check to buy a new computer for eight hundred dollars so she bought a computer so we're going to go to our asset and see there's computer eight hundred Let's review that formatting one more time, and then I'm going to show you another shortcut for doing this. So we increased our computer equipment by $800. Now the challenge is, where do we put the second entry? Well, as it turns out, you have to look at it and say, well, how did she pay for it? Well, she paid for it by writing a check, and writing a check is essentially a use of cash. Therefore, she has less cash. So we're going to make an entry on the left side. Two entries on the left side of the equal sign. So it's going to affect just assets and nothing on this side. So you may be wondering, how can we do that and still remain in balance? The reason is, is because we're going to decrease cash, and we're going to make that minus $800. And instead of doing that, what I can do is come over here and do a shortcut and just copy the number and the formatting by pressing Control and the letter C as in copy. And then Control V as in Victor to paste that in there. And then I can double click and just edit that and put a minus sign. And the parentheses indicate a negative number uh, in the world of business. Parentheses. And our equation still remains in balance. Because 
we have decreased by 800 and increased by 800. So the net effect is there's no change overall to the value of the equation. But what we've done is traded one asset, cash, in exchange for another asset, the computer. And so this is something you do frequently all the time. If you go out and buy a pair of shoes, you've taken some of your cash and essentially converted it to a pair of shoes, or you made a, a transfer. Well, let's do one more. Wyatt bought a set of office furniture on account with his business car credit card totaling $1,500. So, used a credit card. We talked briefly, I believe, that a credit card is like getting a short-term loan. So that's how he paid for it. So he didn't use cash for buying this office furniture. So we know he acquired uh, $800 in office furniture. So we can put our $1,500 here. Here's another shortcut. Just go ahead and copy the formatting. Paste it, and then we'll just change the name, change the value to fifteen hundred. We don't have to worry about doing all that other formatting to it. And then we can copy that over to. He has to pay this money back, so he borrowed the money, essentially with the credit card, and so that creates a liability, has to be paid back, and we keep track of liabilities on things that are bought on account under an account called accounts payable. So we're going to paste 1500 right there. And so we're in balance. 1500 increase, but we've also increased our liabilities at the same time. So the equation remains in balance. So you're going to go ahead and work on the rest of these, and we'll talk a little bit more about some of the other transactions and uh, calculations that we can do uh, to show that we are remaining in balance, which we will do in class. So I hope that helps you out. Give it a you know, give it a lot of thought, work with it, and just think about it. Think about what's happening with each of these transactions. And we will move forward and take a look a little bit later here at expenses and revenue.